Hello and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine's newscast. My name is Valu Grætisson and I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. This excited little dog is Polly and she loves this, so we're going to throw it. Ah. We are here at Þingvellir. Uh, this is our national park, our holiest place of all holy places. We're not here for a good reason, actually. Uh, we want to tell you about a very complicated operation that is happening here and a very sad accident. Uh, we want to show you the whole lake, but as you can see here, and perhaps on my glasses here, is that uh, the weather today is very snow heavy. Uh, Winter Kingdom is back. COVID. Uh, we have much looser restrictions than uh, when last time we met. Uh, the reason is that uh, the Omicron variant is obviously not as dangerous as the Delta or the original, the OG of COVID, uh, which was uh, quite dangerous. Nonetheless, we have had even more deaths uh, recently in Iceland. And uh, in total, I think we are up to 49 deaths. Uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, keep in mind. Uh, this is, of course, uh, harsh, but it is what it is. Uh, and uh, these people are all, uh, they are uh, in the, like, in the over, like, 70, more or less. Uh, most of them are around 80 or, or 90 years old. Uh, not that it matters, but it seems like uh, older people, they, they obviously come out of this in a worse state than, than the young people. Also, uh, we like I went to theater, for example, uh, last uh, last weekend. Uh, the theater we had now have now 500 gathering ban if you're everybody sitting with masks. And it was weird, but it was wonderful because I saw this wonderful dance exhibition uh, called uh, Kvila Sprunkur or laying in cracks, I guess, in glacier cracks. Uh, and it was quite something. Uh, so, uh, Iceland has been starting to be, feel much more like uh, itself once again. Uh, when it comes to the porters, they have been the same since in October last year. It's more or less the same. Uh, if you're coming to Iceland, uh, you have to have these uh, uh, PCR tests and so on uh, before you come, of course. Uh, and and show that you're vaccinated. If you're living in Iceland, you actually have to uh, test within 48 hours. Uh, be, and all of these people that we have been stopping in the, uh, in, in the, in the borders with COVID, they have all been, have connection with Iceland. This is basically what uh, we don't, uh, what, what, what we fear the most. The thing, of course, about this is that you need to go to covid.is. You have much better information there. You can see this all there. They have this in English. Well, they have it in, in every language uh, there is. Uh, uh, of course, Danish also, if you want that. <laughs> so, uh, and enough with that. Uh, we are going into weather. And as you can see, weather is, well, white again. Uh, this is Iceland uh, in its finest state. This used to happen much earlier uh, in the winter. But now it tends to be, if it comes at all, it's coming around January to February. Polly, of course, loves this. She, she's, a, she's a huge fan of snow, by the way. Uh, I also love this. I like skiing. I like uh, being out in the snow. Uh, and snow is basically what Icelanders like, relate to. Uh, when, and also, just the name of the land is Iceland. So, like... Uh, is, is, this is time to have a proper proper name, I guess. So, uh, the thing is, on Monday, we had like this red uh, warning. Uh, we have these like color systems when it comes to warnings in the weather. We have uh, yellow warning, which is not that heavy. Uh, we have orange warning, which is kind of a bummer. And then we have red warnings. And that meant that even the schools were closed on Monday. Uh, although the weather wasn't as bad as predicted, mostly because it was warmer. And that means that, like, if you have uh, 
uh, bad weather and it's raining, it's actually better than if you, if you have uh, more snow. That, it, it's just more complicated. It's like road closes and so on. So it, that therefore it's, it's, uh, it's basically about logistics. Got it? How about it's snowing? Check it out. She has so small feet, but she goes for it. <laughs> She's getting there. Yes. And yes. So it's not easy for Polly actually to be in, in a lot of snow, but it is like it is. And uh, she enjoys it. Uh, the weather also has been very bad, uh, basically, when it comes to uh, like health of January. Uh, as well as this first week of February, uh, second week of February. And this is becoming like a very harsh winter. Uh, it's not that bad though, it's like we can, I mean, it doesn't change anything for us. For us, most of us, there are no like blackouts. If there are, they are like only for minutes. Uh, if you're in the countryside, it can be worse. Uh, for example, on, on Monday, uh, they couldn't repair the, the, the electricity in the countryside uh, because uh, there was also like a hectic electric storm. Uh, this is something new in Iceland actually, electric storms and winters don't go that uh, often together, uh, if ever. Uh, I have not seen it before at least. Like always, when you have freak weather, it's global warming, it's basically hot and cold meeting in the air. And that's not something that was happening in Iceland for the longest time. But it's for some reason happening now. You are relentless, Polly. Okay, something tough. What do you think? Here. <laughs> Polly. <laughs> okay. She is literally swimming in the <laughs> snow. <laughs> Okay, that was nasty. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, to more serious news though. Uh, the reason that we are here. Uh, this is Thingvelli. We have uh, one, of the, one of the biggest uh, lakes in Iceland right here. It's there, if you don't see it. This is the beginning of it. But if we would have better weather, we would actually see uh, a huge lake. It's 83 square kilometers in size. Uh, and not only that, it's... Uh, it's one of the deepest also. Uh, the deepest point is 140 meters. So this is uh, quite, quite the lake. But the thing is, on Thursday, the same day we were actually printing our magazine, and the reason I didn't have any, uh, any new newscast for you last week, because we were busy at doing that, uh, we, were, uh, <coughs> we saw news about there was a small Cessna airplane that went missing. This happens in Iceland. But not often. We didn't know much about it, uh, and the search and rescue team they were called out immediately, and they knew that this could be quite serious, because crashing a plane in Iceland is bad. Crashing an, uh, an airplane in Iceland in weather like this, it's like even if they survive, it can even be hard. So they went full on. They were looking, but they had no idea where this could have been. They were thinking about. Uh, the, the southwest of Iceland, close to Reykjaneska, close to the volcano, which is uh, very far away from here. Uh, and they were even going all the way to the, to the wilderness in the highlands. So they had absolutely no idea to begin with, but quickly on, they found evidence uh, that it, it might have gone down in this area. So what they did actually is that they uh, talked to the media and they asked the, the people that have summer houses around here if they have any security footage and check them out and see if they caught the plane uh, on film, which they did. So uh, on these footage, they saw that this plane uh, was uh, going slowly down, uh, almost like it was landing. Uh, and that's all what we know. Uh, then it crashed, we guess. So they started to uh, uh, look for the plane in the, in the waters and uh, they looked for quite a while uh, until they had like a remote controlled submarine uh, to spot the, the airplane uh, in the, on 50 meters deep, which is quite deep. Uh, the plane, for example, there was no debris around it. There was no debris on the water or anything. 
Uh, and uh, when they found the plane, they also discovered ah, they also discovered that there was no one in the plane, in the rackets. So here's the thing. Uh, <coughs> Uh, these, uh, there were four people in the plane. Um, I can't read my phone right now, so I'm gonna, not going to tell you how old they are. I might be, just be wrong about it. Uh, I can't remember it too well, but they were like all of them except the pilot uh, were uh, in their uh, 30s and 40s. Uh, the youngest one was uh, like early 20s. Uh, they, these were like American, Belgian, uh, a man from the Netherlands, and of course Icelander. The Icelander, there was a pilot. And his name is Haraldur uh, Diego, and he was 49 years old. He was a very like uh, well-known pilot in Iceland. I even worked with him for a while when I, when I was uh, starting in journalism around 15 years ago. Uh, I knew him uh, very little, but he uh, was a good guy. Uh, has a very good reputation. And the thing is that uh, he seems to have managed to land on the water. Now, Thingvallavatn is also a little bit complicated when it comes to lakes, because the water in it is uh, 20 years old, eventually. The thing is that uh, these waters... Yeah, where do you want to go? These waters... They are, uh, they are both deep and they are from zero to one degree. When the plane actually went down, there was minus eight degrees in Iceland. And the thing is that uh, it's both like hard to dive there. Morning. Hello. It's quite hard to dive there and it's quite hard to basically uh, survive there. Uh, for example, like, uh, there are very few fishes in it. And the thing is that, uh, yeah, what happened basically is that uh, the plane landed uh, on, the, on the waters and people seem to have been able to get out of the plane. Uh, but uh, there were one kilometer to the next beach, which is, uh, I mean, it sounds perhaps for some like it, well, they might have just swam to, to, the, uh, to, to the shore. But keep in mind, it's zero to one uh, degrees, the water. Uh, and, and like the North Atlantic Ocean is around like three to five degrees right now, much warmer actually. And trust me, you do not want to find yourself in the North Atlantic Ocean. So when they landed, they seems to have gone into the water and tried to sw swim to the banks. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it was almost like a death trap in, in a way. So they all uh, seem to have gone down. Uh, and the search and rescue teams, they were frantically trying to look for them. Whoa, <laughs> hello. And of course, uh, found them in the end. But then enters a lot of storms. Hello. Hey guys. Then enters a lot of storms because they were trying to retrieve the bodies, but they couldn't. Also, not only is it hard because of the weather, like right now, uh, also because it's not easy to go and dive down there. Uh, the thing is, the diver, he can't be in the water for more than 20 minutes uh, and he can only do it once per day. Uh, not only that, where's Polly? Polly! Your dog is trapped here. Yeah. Yeah, she can't go out. <laughs> She's stuck. Yeah, I'll help her, don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> Was he stuck there? Long time now. No, okay. Uh. Uh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. I got myself into the same pickle. No, don't come. What are you doing? <laughs> <Partly. laughs> right. uh. uh. 
So, where were we? Yeah, the divers. Uh, the divers actually can't go... Oh, nay, 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 nay. The divers have to dive for 20 minutes and are a minute long good because not, it's considered not safe. Uh, one reason is basically uh, you can be disoriented uh, in the water. It's also cold. And also, uh, it can freeze above you uh, pretty easily. It's perhaps not thick ice, but it's enough to confuse you. So the divers that are going to rescue them, and they're going to try to do this tomorrow on Wednesday, they are actually rehearsing on land right now, because they only have six minutes when they go down to the bodies, which is at 15 meters deep depth. And I mean, I know it sounds so horrible, and it is, and it's quite dangerous, but it's very, like, uh, essential that uh, they get the bodies out before the weather gets any worse, and uh, it's also important, of course, for the families. So, the plan is basically to find them tomorrow, they're going to go after them, and they were, like the certain rescue teams, they were quite quick in finding these bodies, and surprisingly quick to find the plane, because they had no idea uh, in the beginning where it went down. And you have to be a little bit, uh, like, uh, you have to respect these guys. They are, they have shown once more that they are probably one of the, the, the most, uh, the best, one of the best, like, search and rescue teams in the world. Uh, and they have been relentlessly looking for this. And for the people... Yeah, I'm gonna show you here. But this is, of course, Silvra. And Silvra is a very famous Icelandic uh, uh, creek uh, filled with water. It's uh, incredibly deep uh, and it can be incredibly dangerous actually to dive there. A lot of people, well not, not a lot of people, but some people have died here. Uh, if something goes wrong, it's very hard to come out of that. Also, it's incredibly cold and the reason is because of Langjökull glacier. The glacier that we actually went to the last time when we were visiting the ice cave. Uh, that ca that uh, glacier actually pushes down the water that eventually tw it takes it 20 years to stream into these rivers here. Uh, and it renews the whole lake in one year. This means that this lake is extremely cold. It's much colder than, than uh, most lakes in Iceland. It's like zero to two percent, two uh, degrees. <laughs> and you can just see, I have a snow pole here, for example. Just put it here. Uh, and it's, it's not gonna melt for a while, which is, uh, just shows how, how cold this is. Uh, but for some reason, people choose to go and, of course, uh, dive here, and they even pay money for it. I mean, it's to their own. Uh, but, uh, of course, this is an incredibly tragic accident when it comes to these uh, people. Uh, one of these uh, young people were actually a man called Josh Newman. Uh, he's American, uh, and he was, I think, around 22 years old. Uh, I, I hope if, if it's wrong, like, don't uh, kill me for it. It's just, uh, then it's just... Uh, I'm trying to do it by memory, but uh, Josh is was uh, he was actually like a, a extreme skater. He had a YouTube channel with more than one million followers, so he was very well known. Had a lot of fans. So uh, my my like condolence both for of course the family as well as the fans. It's uh, really sad to lose people uh, like that. Uh, the other people were of course. A, a, a person from Belgium uh, as well as the Netherlands. And for us Icelanders, we lost a very experienced pilot. And he was also a, a pretty fine photographer. Uh, and he had a friend called, uh, his name is Chris Buchart. And he is a very famous also a photographer. And he actually uh, wrote a very like beautiful memory about him uh, on his social media. So it's like, uh, he touched a lot of people, Haraldur, uh, as well. So uh, this is just an absolute tragedy. This is being invested by the police as well as a, like we have a special committee that actually investigate these things. And it often takes them around one, even up to two years to invest investigate this. So it might be uh, quite some time until we know exactly what happened. 
uh, not only that, but uh, we, uh, uh, but well, all, all, all of that. But we also just know that what happened. Uh, the big picture is they managed to land on the water and then they went into the water itself. And as you can see, I don't know if the ball is still there. Ah, it disappeared. But it's like uh, it's incredibly uh, cold, uh, and it's it's almost impossible to survive that unless you are extremely lucky and. Uh, uh, and just uh, other human, like, like with supernatural strength almost. Uh, so, uh, this is it for us. Uh, I just want to remind, remind you, of course, uh, on the shop, you can get this here, there, for example. Uh, not this, though. Uh, I don't know why. We should actually sell ski goggles when you think about it. Uh, and uh, our shop is, of course, on our homepage, grapevine.is. Uh, or you can find it in the link below here. Uh, like and subscribe, please. Uh, we need more of subscribers uh, and likes. And also comment. It basically means, I mean, there is some algorithm that tells people uh, that uh, someone is interested in this and more people will see it and more will join the party and everybody will benefit. Uh, until then, uh, goodbye and see you on Thursday. Me and Polly, we're going to play more in the snow. Yeah, ready? <laughs> so mean. Holly. <laughs> if you want to tie it tonight, I will be very <laughs> <laughs>